Hello, my name is Michael Lambert and uh, today I want to talk about uh, something we've discussed in the past and that is the um, extraordinary waste of money, the, the outrageous waste of money that, uh, that, that occurred uh, as a result of Covid. And in particular I want to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, PPE and about test and trace. Because I think uh, in particular test and trace was probably the, well almost certainly the biggest waste of money that this country has ever ever uh, been involved in. It was a staggering, staggering waste and I don't think it should be forgotten. And I don't think enough people or I don't think anybody's actually been brought to, uh, brought to account for it. As far as uh, PPE is concerned, the government have said that they're going to go after people who made a lot of money out of PPE. Now, I think that's fine if people supplied uh, uh, PPE that was faulty, it wasn't suitable and so on, couldn't be used, and obviously that's breach of contract and they've, the government has every right to sue them. But I think for people who uh, who supplied PPE and overcharged, uh, I think there's very little, little case for going after them. And besides which, whether people supplied uh, the right uh, PPE or, or not, a lot of these companies, because they're people who were not established companies, they were just in and outers. Uh, a lot of these companies have just gone, uh, have been closed down. They've transferred the money to tax havens and they've closed the companies. And then that, uh, in those cases, they'll, the, the money will never be recovered. So I think it's very unlikely much money is going to going to be recovered from the from the PPE firms. We hear about uh, Michelle Moan being um, being pursued, but I think she's being pursued really because she's she's quite famous and she's the most high high profile of these 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 cases. But uh, basically, I think they're they're they're, they're all going to get away with it. But uh, test and trace is is quite is quite different because because of the staggering staggering amounts involved. Let me just to put this. In, in, into context, let me just tell you about Crossrail. Now, you know Crossrail is a, a railway that goes right the way across London from Reading and Heathrow Airport all the way to, to Essex. It's uh, 60 miles long and 25 of, of those miles are a double tunnel going right under London. A tunnel which is uh, about the length of the Channel Tunnel. It's an enormous, enormous project. At the time that it was built, it was uh, uh, the biggest construction product, uh, project in, in Europe. And tens of thousands of people were involved in it. It was a vast project. It, 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 it overran and it was late and it was uh, much, much more expensive than anticipated originally. But uh, it involves 41 stations, uh, 10 of them all completely new stations. It's, uh, in, they've got 70 odd uh, trains, these enormous trains, all very nice and uh, you know, very, very high quality. They've got the most sophisticated signalling systems and so on. In other words, it is an absolutely top, top, top railway, uh, um, underground railway. It's now carrying, as it happens, 750,000 passengers a day. So it's a huge, huge success. Now this whole thing, which as I say, ran hopelessly over budget, it cost a total of £18.6 billion. Pounds. As I say, it was the at the time the biggest construction project in Europe. Now the budget uh, for uh, Test and Trace, which was run by uh, a lady called uh, Dido Harding, a lady who was a friend of, uh, of uh, David Cameron, who I think put her in the House of Lords, and uh, she'd been uh, CEO of Talk Talk, and there'd been a lot of scandal there, and all sorts of things went wrong. And uh, uh, her budget for uh, test and trace, in order to test people and then trace their contacts, was double the cost of uh, Crossrail. It was £37 billion. Pounds. In fact, she saved us all a lot of money because she only actually managed to spend twenty eight billion before the the whole thing was, uh, was came came to an end. But you have to say well what what do you spend twenty eight thousand million pounds on when you're testing and tracing? I mean just where did that money go and uh, it, it it doesn't take long to see to get an idea of where it where it went. Now, uh, at one stage they were employing, I think, 25,000 people to, uh, to phone people and make, uh, uh, make contact with people. And of those who were involved in 
organizing this. Uh, the, the usual names that we all know, the management companies and the big firms of accountants were all involved. And uh, Serco, for example, they were paid uh, 108 million initially. And uh, uh, there was a call center which was operated by an American company called Citel, and they got 84 million. IBM got 25 million for, for doing some software. All components, administering tests, processing samples in laboratories and contact tracing were contracted to private companies. You see, it's all about involving private companies. Don't use the NHS, don't use the civil service, get in consultants. And they included, as I say, Serco and another firm called MITI, I'm not sure what nationality they are, G4S, they always get involved in all big public contracts. Sodexo, that's a French company who is actually, they're actually running our border in, in, in Dover because we, we, it's too complicated for us. So we've got a French company, Sodexo, who are also involved in these uh, uh, testing and tracing. And uh, uh, Deloitte's, uh, they, they provided 1,100 uh, consultants. Now, what a consultant does when you're running a test and trace operation. I, I, I have no idea. But there were 1,100 and the, uh, uh, the Public Accounts Committee, when they looked into this, they criticised uh, in particular the fact that uh, at that time there were 2,500 consultants being paid an average of £1,100 per day. That's £140 an hour. Now, not many people earn that much money. But anyway, £1,100 a day on average. And you have to ask, 2,500 of them, were they all worth £1,100 a day? And if you've got a system that's working, why why do you need that many consistent consultants? Because they were there for months and months and months. It's all our money. It was just spin, 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 spin. The initial budget for 2022... 2020-21 was 15 billion, uh, of which 85% was uh, for testing. That's 12.8 billion was set aside for testing. Now, if you tested every single man, woman, and child in the country, and you had 12.8 billion, that would work out at 191 pounds per person for every man, woman, and child in the country. Now, I, I, I don't know anybody, anybody who was traced and tested, or tested and traced. And uh, it was confirmed in uh, February 22 that uh, during 21-22, the test and trace program had cost 15.7 billion. Now, after the first, uh, uh, first uh, batches of uh, whatever they were doing, uh, Serco were then given a, a second contract uh, for £322 million. Pounds. And then, uh, uh, sometime later, they were given another contract for £212 million, presumably providing uh, more consultants. So in total, they got, Circo got £642 million pounds to, uh, uh, well, to consult. Test kits for use at home, they were provided by Randox, who got a contract, an initial contract for £100 million. Thirty-three million pounds. Now, Randox, as I mentioned uh, recently, is, uh, was the company that uh, uh, Owen Patterson was lobbying for. He was being paid by Randox a hundred thousand pounds a year to lobby for them in Parliament, and uh, subsequently had to resign because of it when it was when it was found out. Even though Johnson did everything possible to change the rules so that he could, he could remain, but in fact he eventually had to go. Now, Randox, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'll remind you again because it's really quite interesting. Randox, it looks like in 2020, they, were, they, they weren't doing too well, struggling a bit, I think, because that year they lost £19,000. It's a fair-sized company. They run the Grand National and all the rest of it. So they lost £19,000 in, uh, in 2020. And then, once they'd got this contract to provide these test kits, they suddenly made a profit of £225 million in one year. It's getting over £20 million a month, isn't it? Suddenly, out of the blue, this contract. The next year, they made £170 million. Then after that, presumably, the contracts came to an end. So they made nearly £400 million profit. No doubt, thanks to, in no small measure, to Owen Patterson's efforts on their behalf. It reminds me also of uh, uh, um, one of the companies that's providing accommodation for asylum seekers in Kent, a firm called uh, Clear Spring Ready Homes. 
in uh, uh, January, the year ended January 2020, sorry, January 2020, they, uh, uh, they lost £1.1 million, pounds, a big loss. The next year, this is a 21, they made a profit. They went from a loss of 1.1 million to a profit of 4.4 million. Next year, they made a profit of seven times as much, 28 million. And this year, up to January 23, they made a profit of 62 million. And the owner of Clear Springs, uh, uh, Clear Spring uh, Ready Homes, he's he's uh, he's on the Sunday Times rich list. He's worth 750 million pounds now and he's accommodating uh, asylum seekers the asylum seekers that are not being processed and uh, uh, he's appeared in the guardian several times uh, concerning the atrocious conditions in which he's provided the uh, the accommodation for these asylum seekers now there was a stab at having a, a, a an app there was an app available for 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 this uh, testing and tracing but uh, the government didn't want it so they decided to to uh, develop their own app, and it took a long time. And uh, at one stage, uh, uh, Liberal MP uh, Daisy Cooper, she tweeted uh, the following. She said, oh, this is on the 28th of May. She said, uh, Dido Harding just told me that the NHS app, described by the PM a week ago as world-beating, is in fact just a tre- cherry on the top of the tracing system, which itself won't be fully operational until the end of June, four weeks after lockdown restrictions ease. Three weeks later, they gave up the the app altogether and they decided to use another app. And uh, it was reported uh, uh, that uh, Serco and Sitel between them have been contracted to supply 15,000 call centre workers. Now, uh, on the 3rd of June, Channel 4 News uh, reported that uh, 4,456 cases had been confirmed of COVID-19 between the 28th and 31st of May. So within those four days, uh, 4,456. And uh, these people had all been traced. And they were able to give the names of 4,634 contacts. In other words, each person was able to say, uh, give the name of just one contact. And it seems extremely unlikely that none of those had had more than one one contact. But anyway, they were able to give the names of 4,634 contacts. And uh, the people doing Test and Trace had been able to contact 1,749 and uh, approximately one third of those names they had. On the same day, a contact tracer said in a BBC interview that although she had worked for 38 hours, she had not been asked to speak to anyone since beginning work and had spent her time watching Netflix. There were quite a few cases of of, of that. In other words, the the whole thing was just a fiasco. The whole test and trace was really about uh, uh, consultants and firms of consultants, and subcontractors making lots and lots and lots of money, as was PPE. The government were just screwed. And I think what what we should uh, be concerned about, really, is the fact that the government's the biggest spender in the country. Uh, and it's our money they're spending. I mean, after all, all this squandering, I mean, I, I repeat again, you know, what was actually spent, 28 million, was, was, was one and a half times the cost of the biggest construction project in Europe at the time, 28 billion. Uh, it was clearly a complete waste. I mean, even the, the uh, um, public gas committee said that it, it really wasn't, it was questionable whether it had any effect whatsoever. But to spend that much money, uh, when we're in a country where we, we, we all know how so many people are suffering, you know, children going to school, hungry, the health service and such a mess. Everything is right. I don't have to go through the list. We all know it's in such a mess. But I think just to say, oh, this is on the past, let's forget it, let's move on, is not good enough. I think people should be, should, should be, should be brought to account for this. How is Dido Harding still in the House of Lords? This woman who has presided over a complete and utter waste of £28,000 million of, of public money. 
It just is not right. And unless we address these things, unless we set up proper in, in Parliament, uh, not in, in, in sorry, in Whitehall, proper purchasing systems where you've got controls and so on. I know a lot of this PP was bought during a pandemic when there was a where there was a lot of uh, uh, demand for worldwide demand for PP and so on. I could tell you a lot about that, and it was. It, it was nothing like as bad as is, is, is made out. It was nothing like the panic that was uh, that, it, that it was uh, it was made out to be. It was in fact uh, uh, people in Parliament, people, senior ministers, and so on, uh, taking advantage of their position to, to make money for their friends. And I have no doubt whatsoever that a lot of them will have uh, will have benefited financially hugely from some of these some of these contracts. But I think you have to set up systems. You have to involve private, private, private enterprise. You have to have people as consultants or something to look over some of these contracts from time to time to audit them properly, not properly, not not uh, 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 accountancy firms. You see, I think they've got this system now in, in this this uh, routine in in in, uh, in Whitehall, whereby if a senior civil servant has to make a decision, uh, they don't want to take responsibility for it. So what they do, they get hold of consultants. And the cost on Holtons, they see all oh, the money, 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 and they just say, oh, yes, yeah, so we'll look into it. And they get a team together and they charge them out at 1500 quid a day each. And they send in their bill for 30000 They say, yes, that's a, that's a fair enough decision. The, uh, and the civil servant says, oh, that's right. And the, the consultants have had a look at it and they said, it's OK, so I can go ahead. And I, there's no risk. And if it all goes wrong, he's a, he can come back and say, oh, uh, the consultant said it was all right. And I think you've got to get away from that. I think you must have much more professional buying in in, in, in government. And as I say, I think it, it, it would be a good thing to to involve people who have experience. You know, if you're buying for a big supermarket or you're buying for any big big company, I mean, you know what you're doing. And if you're asked once in a while to have a look and see what 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 the you know what money and um, how uh, civil servants are buying, just to just have a look now and then and say, you know, what the hell's this? You you know, you're overpaying here or, or there. Just to let them know they can't just just spend public money, as in this case, the money that was spent here, PPE and test and trace, was just just money spent like water because it didn't matter, because it's uh, it, it's our money, it's taxpayers' money. Who cares? And uh, we're not that rich. We can't afford it. Nobody can afford it. But we certainly can't afford uh, uh, this sort of thing. So anyway, I know I've covered much of this stuff before, but I did think it was important to 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 uh, uh, to remind you of it. And uh, I, I think it is it shouldn't be forgotten. That, that's uh, my main message. It's, uh, as I say, it was I think uh, test and trace was the biggest waste of money this country has ever ever uh, been engaged in. So anyhow, that's what I think about it. If you've watched as far as always, thank you very much indeed. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you would do so. And uh, until next time, thank you for watching and bye for now.